Hi everybody, this is David, and we're continuing on talking about historical narratives. Now, last week we said that historical narratives have two sides to them. Uh, on one hand, it's history. They're historical. These events actually did occur. They're not fictional, and uh, they're trustworthy. On the other hand, uh, it is a story. That is, the author's taking history and made a an actual story out of it. And so we interp when we interpret historical narratives, we need to keep both these ideas in mind. It really is a story, and it really is history. Now, last week we talked about the narrative side of historical narratives. And uh, what we did is we looked at characters, we, we talked about main characters, uh, like uh, protagonist, antagonist, uh, supporting characters, Th that kind of thing. Uh, we talked about conflict and how to identify conflict. And uh, really what we said is we need to pay attention to characters and conflict to figure out what exactly um, the story is that the author's trying to tell. Now, I, I don't think I really explained this last week or in the last set of videos, but historical narratives, because they have two sides, um, the authors tend to choose either to communicate primarily through narrative elements such as characters and conflict and plot or through the historical side, which we'll explain today. Uh, but this is basically what I'm trying to get at. There are certain historical narratives. Last week we talked about the, um, the story of Jonah. Uh, in Jonah, for example, the author is primarily talking through the development of the plot with the characters and the conflict. That's how the author makes his point. But there are other historical narratives. Let's take, for example, um, Acts, where the author chooses not so much to communicate through the characters and the conflict, although that is certainly present, as much as through the selecting of events. And so um, while both of these are present, uh, these are two, two different elements that we have to learn to understand. So today I want to talk about the history side of historical elements and how to understand that side. Uh, I've got three elements that we're going to really look at depth today. The first is the fact that the author selects events. Um, the next is the ordering of the events. So the author can actually choose to reorder the historical events to make a certain point. And then finally, the way the author actually presents the history or the way he edits the history um, or the way he nuances history will a lot of times be indicative or help us understand the point he's actually trying to make. Let's go into these in more detail. First let's talk about selectivity. Uh, the author chooses the events to talk about. Uh, he chooses the events that really tell the story he wants to talk about. Uh, let me give you two examples. First, you have the Gospel of John. Now, uh, if you look at the content of the Gospel of John, um, that is, what miracles he does, what conversations he has, his teachings, they're pretty unique to John. That is, Matthew, Mark, and Luke don't really talk about the same things that John does. Uh, John chooses to, cho to discuss completely different stuff. Now, here's the reason. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the writers of those Gospels aren't as concerned as proving Jesus' divinity as John is. So while Matthew, Mark, and Luke are, are not concerned with Jesus' divinity, John is. In fact, it's one of the primary themes in the Gospel of John that Jesus is God. And so if the, gospel, if the writer of John is trying to prove that Jesus is God, what he did was selected the events where Jesus was trying to convince the world of, of his identity as God. And he also chose the miracles that in some way proved that he was God. So the Gospel of John is a selection of miracles and teachings of Jesus that emphasize the fact that he was God. He doesn't so much talk about the miracles that... Um, that emphasize his messiahship or the conversations that emphasize his messiahship as much as he really wants to point out that he is uh, in fact God. Uh, 
And so you can look at the conflicts within uh, and the conversations he has. Like, for example, when he, he kind of, um, Jesus makes a really explicit Yahwehism in John where he identifies himself as being uh, before, before Abraham, um, really taking a, a powerful divine stance there. That's one example. The next example is the book of Acts. A lot of times we think the book of Acts is uh, how to build a church or maybe just uh, the story of Paul. But when you really look at it carefully, uh, even though Paul does have a major impact and starting church is obviously a, a big part of Acts, that's not what Acts is about. Now, Acts is actually a selection of events that explain how God orchestrated the transition from a Jerusalem-centered Jewish Christianity to a Roman-centered Gentile Christianity. Uh, let me put it this way. You remember when the church first got started in, in Jerusalem? Uh, Jesus was Jewish, the disciples were Jewish, and when Pentecost came, they, they go out, they preach the gospel, and thousands of Jews get saved. Now, because Jesus was the Jewish Messiah, it was all Jews getting saved. It's a Jewish concept, so Gentiles weren't really, really involved in any of this. And so Christianity was originally a Jewish religion. Skip forward uh, half, a, half a century later, and the church, the Christian church is almost completely Gentile with a very small minority of, of Jews within it. And so the church has really transitioned from being uh, Jew Jewish-centered and Jewish Christianity to being a Gentile Christianity. And so I think really what the book of Acts is about is to explain how and why that happened. And so what the author does is he selects all the events that talk about how Christianity started as Jewish within Jerusalem. And he pinpoints all the key transition events that started transitioning the church to becoming more Gentile. How the Gentiles started receiving the gospel. How the church decided to start sharing the gospel with the Gentiles. And he also talks about why the Jews stopped receiving the gospel, turning against it. And so that's really the selection. Is Acts is about explaining the transition from a Jewish Christianity to a Gentile Christianity. So these are two examples of how the author can select events to make his point or to, to, to talk about the story he really wants to deal with. Now, let's talk about questions you can ask yourself so you can make sense of the selectivity so you can really understand how the author is trying to communicate through a selection of events. Here, here's a couple of things you can ask yourself. As you're reading the story, ask yourself, are there patterns being developed in the story? So, if, so for example, is there a cycle being, uh, being developed here? In Judges, for example, there is uh, a pattern of Israel being in a relationship with God, rejecting God, being punished by God, Israel being uh, repentant, God saving them again. And so that's a pattern that's developed. So pay attention to, to cyclical uh, patterns. The next thing is their progression. So instead of being a cyclical pattern, maybe there's a linear progression occurring. Uh, like we said, from Jewish Jerusalem to Gentile Rome is a progression within Acts. Um, in the gospel, sometimes Jesus is, is walking in, cir in cycles between um, his, his home base in, in northern uh, uh, Na Na Nazareth and Jerusalem. He's walking in cycles, and sometimes it's just a straight line. And finally, ask yourself, are there themes present throughout the entire story? Is there something that you see consistently occurring throughout the entire story that, that you think is key? And when you ask yourself these questions, you start, you start noticing that the author has selected certain dimensions and, and events to make a specific point.